Uh, hi, my name is Fernando Gaviria. Um, I'm here talking with Chris Garden. I said right, <laughs> and um, I'm very, very appreciative for having me to this interview about the the Whistler. What is the translation for me? My movie to the English uh, language in the United States. Thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, listeners and viewers, wherever you are in the world right now. You are tuned in to Hellblazer Biz with your host, as always, me, Chris Gordon. Thank you all for coming. Please, as always, support me on social media. Uh, without your sharing and your likes and your retweets, I can't provide you the guests. <laughs> anyway, uh, please follow me also on YouTube, social media, and Amazon Prime UK. Spotify, Apple and Google Podcasts, and more. Uh, I'm everywhere. <laughs> anyway, I've got a fantastic guest for you today. He is a star of Mexican screen and TV series, some fantastic TV series, and also some fantastic roles within those shows as well. He was in Bad Boys 2, which was one of his breakthrough roles um, several years ago. And he's a really great guy. I had a really great fun chat with this man. And he's about here talking about his new film, El Silbon, which translates as The Whistler. It's a Spanish horror story, but don't worry, you don't need to really understand Spanish to watch it. There are subtitles, but the way the film is, you don't need it. It's a scary film. It's a good film. And before I actually go into the interview with my guest, which is Fernando Gabriel, I'm going to introduce you to the trailer. Enjoy. El mal es la ausencia del bien. Condición exclusivamente humana. La noche de su nacimiento marcó su trágica vida. Y una maldición cayó sobre él y toda su estirpe. en el cuerpo de la niña más dulce. No habla, solo sirva. La batalla del bien y el mal no conoce noción del tiempo. Everyone, I have the honor and the pleasure of the company of Fernando Gaviria. And I've just said that wrong. Yes. I have to pronounce it correctly. I've just completely said that wrong. So, sorry, it's Fernando. Okay. It's, <laughs> it's okay. It's okay, Chris. You did right. No worries. Excellent. Thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. And, I, uh, you know, it's great to, great to finally meet you and uh, chat to you face to face. Well, I say meet you. We're still five, six thousand miles apart. But... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's great, you know, with technology nowadays, we can do this. Uh, it's amazing. It is absolutely fantastic. I, I, you know, yeah. 10 years ago, I would, you'd never think you could do anything like this. It's amazing. No way. <laughs> In a way, we can do this, yeah. Yeah, we, so, yeah. We, we very, we're very fortunate right now with the technology. Definitely, definitely. And we're here, obviously, because of your film that you're, that's coming out, the, the Whistler, which is the, the English version of it. Um, is it El Silbon in Spanish? Right. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, well, hey. say correct. Excellent, excellent. It's a good film. It's a great film, actually. I watched. I did have watched it. I watched it on my phone. Uh, I didn't have the pleasure of watching it on my big screen TV because I sent the link to watch. So I was watching on my lunch hours. And yeah, I will say it's a film that people should go out and watch. We'll get talking about it later on, but I'll just say for now, people should go and watch this film. Very good. And it doesn't matter. It's a, it's a Spanish language film, and but I don't think it matters if you don't speak spanish it doesn't matter i mean you obviously you've got subtitles there in a way which you can follow which is which is great but i i thought there was a very clever use of language 
against because there's there's not that much talking in there. <laughs> You're right. So it makes You're it right. very it makes it very very universal through the right. actions, the suspense, the, right. the 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 just the mood of the film takes you right through. You don't need the language um, to come in. Obviously now and then you do. Obviously for the talking. So it it speaks volumes to anyone, uh, regardless of whether you speak Spanish or not. It's, yeah, uh, let me put my glasses. <laughs> I can see you better. Uh, yeah, man, you know what? That is the great work to Gisbert Bermudez, the director and writer of this movie. Mm-hmm. He was very clear. He wanted to do this movie the more universal he can, and he did a great job. You know what's funny? In the beginning, as an actor, I was a little mad with him <laughs> because... I didn't even talk. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I don't have a lie. You say, you don't need them. They say, what do I mean? I don't need them. Yeah, you don't need them. You in, mm-hmm. you're on the screen. You don't need to talk. You, you know, he gave me a lot of, he was so nice, you know. He was a lot of compliments about my acting. Say, blah, blah, blah. You as an actor, you want to talk <laughs> yeah, yeah. the most you can because you're an actor, you know. When you talk, you, but he's a great director. He gave me a lot of, details about what is the movie about, what he really wants to the mm-hmm. restrict in the everywhere. He wants that exactly what you got. Be you, the most universal we can to be in all way, in all languages, in all culture, to be on this table that people can fill in. They can be, because believe it or not, when there's a lot of dialogue, people can get distracted and when you translate that it makes a little harder, you know. Be, so mm-hmm. yeah, he did, he did amazing job. So I'm glad you got the the mean or the principal goal he has with the movie. The be the more universal he can, he did. Look at what's going on right now. Definitely, definitely. And I mean, the fact you know, it's it is that that's that's the sense. That is the first thing I picked up on was the fact that there's there's no dialogue because obviously I like watching foreign films anyway. Um, yeah. But as I was thinking, the Spanish film was. Sometimes it can be difficult because you can't have to, you know, if you don't speak the language. I speak German. Right. Before, I didn't. I haven't learned Spanish yet. Yet, I say. <laughs> so, you know, it's one of those where you do. You sometimes miss things because if you're looking at the subtitles, you miss what's going on the screen. Every now and then, but I think with um, the Whistler, definitely very, very good vibe, and I, I, it, it made me jump. Um, and <laughs> there were some very, very good moments, which I, I'm not going to spoil the film for anyone because I won't talk about the actual what happens in the film. But yeah, there Thank were mo- there were moments where it was very, very good. And your character, obviously, you know, again, I, I don't want to spoil it by saying <laughs> what the character is, but your character and, and and the way you portrayed it was fantastic and very, oh. very deep. Thank. You. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Thank you, man. Thank you. No, you're welcome. How hard is it for for an actor like yourself? Like you just said, you you hated the director when he told you got no lines. How hard is it? Because everything that means there's more focus on your physical attributes and the physical acting itself. How hard was that? Listen, Chris, it was the most challenge uh, character in all my career. I have more than twenty years. 20 years. Uh, give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. Mommy. Okay, sorry. My mom doesn't know. <laughs> I'm an <laughs> interview, so she starts talking. Man, Latina. Fashion. I say, Mama, no, you have to stop. I'm an interviewer. Okay. Uh, good question. Because uh, when I got the script and I saw the character is abused father, not only physically, but mentally with his son. And it, it was tough. It was tough because I need to look with a way to be very real, very mm-hmm. visceral. I said, right? Visceral? Yeah. yeah, come from inside. So the first thing I did was I lost around 12 kilograms. I think it's 20 oh. something pounds. Mm-hmm. That was the first part, and then that helped me a lot, right? Because I'm already into in that character, and it was, it was, you know, you know what is interesting about this situation with with this character is uh, the movie was shoot in Venezuela. Mm-hmm. Venezuela is my country. I haven't been there for more than twenty years. 
Wow. Obviously, maybe you heard about the situation in Venezuela. It's very bad in all yeah. ways. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, you know what is funny? When I came back there, we, 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 I came back uh, like a two months before we started shooting. Uh, uh-huh. The director, Gisbert, was very... I'm telling you, this guy was very clear what he wants. And he told me... in contact with the place we want to shoot in and I need we need uh, he believes what I love it a lot of rehearsal so the the most important thing or the, the most interesting thing was when I got in Venezuela I was in shock and that affected me a lot because right. it wasn't the country I left 20 something years so yeah. that made me so mad very mad in what level that helped me with the character. So everything went in my favor. <laughs> uh, even I was so inco- uncomfortable with the situation. And we shot in a very small town in the mountains. Mm-hmm. And we don't even have, Venezuela, I think is the worst country in Wi-Fi. The internet there is very bad. Okay. So I even, I don't have a Wi-Fi all the time. So that helped me to isolate. Yeah. Plus, I was so mad with the situation. I was around, looking around. So how that helped me a lot. So everything went in the right in the right place. You know, I lost weight. That helped me to be in the character because Baudilio is a guy for 1800s. Mm-hmm. So I know my look, my physical is not gonna be real if I can keep this way. I have to be, yeah. you know, skinnier. So everything went in the right direction when I got there. So. I guess was the universe, God helped me to portray because it's very challenging for me because this guy is very, very, very mean, very cruel. So <laughs> that helped me. Excellent. Now you'll have to give me tips on how you lost weight so quickly because I need to lose about 30 <laughs> pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, let me tell you something. By the way, uh, the first five pa- uh, five kilograms were easy and then it was so hard for me. You know what helped me? And it started to be vegetarian. No, mm-hmm. it, no meat, and done. I, I lost five pounds like this. So here we go. <laughs> oh wow! Okay, there. <laughs> have to give that a try. I was going to say yeah, because I mean you are a body. You were well. You are a bodybuilder. You were a professional bodybuilder as well. Um, so I can imagine yeah, the, the character change. You, you, I can see where where you had you know where you decided you, you, a weight loss would be better. Otherwise, you'd be right. just big bulk. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, and I mean, the film itself, as I mentioned before, obviously, with the way the lighting and the mood music goes for anyone who wants, you know, will be watching. That's that what that's what takes you through the film as well, obviously, with, as well as the portrayals and the characters. And it's very much, I would say, in the sense of. Well, it is. I mean, I'd say it was an old fairy tale, but that's where it's based on, isn't it? It's actually based on um, tales and, and folk tales throughout the, if i'm if i'm saying this right i'm, I'm not sure <laughs> i might be completely wrong but i believe the, the, the whole story of el silbo is is based on the old folk tales through the years um yeah and that's yeah, what it came correct. about yeah 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 exactly cool. yeah it's, it's a story happened in in the woods uh the borderline between venezuela and colombia in that area uh, those countries are almost the same Mm-hmm. Same language, same culture, same food, same music. So it became in a in a, in a story, a folklore tale story in that area for years, for years. Uh, what I, most the most uh, interesting about this movie is in our culture in Venezuela. Mm-hmm. I think somebody did a short film in the seventies, but nobody has done anything like this, like a real movie the most professional, we have a great DP, we great director, uh, we have a very, very, very good people, professional, high level in Venezuela. So for Venezuela was a boss office all uh, last year, 2018, was mm-hmm. the boss office in the country. So that was because all our, all our country we're like oh my god it's a movie about this story we just heard when we were little mm-hmm. and it so that works perfectly Fantastic. and now it's gonna be maybe in the world maybe we don't know you know you know how it's show business you never know it's not a formula <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but i think uh, it's gonna be good i'm very excited just what's going on with the movie 
Excellent, excellent. Well, I've been sharing it on Facebook as well. Uh, and this is for the home to be telling people, because uh, obviously my Facebook for, for what I do with the show, a, friend, a lot of people in the industry as well, so I'm like, please, please go and watch this film, because it is very, <laughs> I just really can't praise it oh, enough. Please. I thought it was very, very uh, good. Uh, Please, uh, so send to me a friend request, or I'll 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 follow you, I'll look at you, and on okay, Facebook. Yeah. Uh, I wanna I wanna I wanna I wanna have that too and post in my Facebook. Fantastic! Page. Yeah, yeah, I'll be quite happy. I'll send a request, and we, you know, we can connect, and I'll uh, I'll tag absolutely. you in. I'll tag you in when I start sharing <laughs> sharing everything Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, Chris, absolutely. Brilliant. Okay, and I mean. This you are an experienced actor yourself, anyway. I mean, but what made you choose? Because obviously, bodybuilding to acting. I, I mean, you're on the stage. I can see. But so what, what, why do you, you're always on the stage? So you're in front of people. But well, what made you choose? Well, what made you decide? Well, let me tell you. Well, I wasn't professional bodybuilder. I wish, but I I could I couldn't. Okay. I was in the beginning like a amateur. I was very close. In 1993, 94. Mm -hmm. I was uh, very serious about that. What happened is, I always want to be an actor since I was little, since I was a kid. The reason was, I don't know, for some reason, and avoid that. I'm more like, nah, it's a hobby. It's it's not really my passion. So when years came by, I am start always thinking about that. It's like, I love that. I love, I want to be an actor. So after I tried, I graduated in marketing, advertising in my country, and opened my own gym. I, was, I wasn't happy at all. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So one day, uh, I was 23, I guess, 24, and I, and I said, you know what? I want to be an actor. That's what I want to be. So my decision was to move to the United States mm-hmm. because I want to be in Hollywood. <laughs> That was my plan, and I did. I did because worse in that way. But that's it. And I started studying, and I started focus on my passion and that. And that was a transaction. Really, I always want to be an actor. Always, always. But uh, you know, for one reason or another, one I avoid that. And uh, never is late to follow your dreams. You know, that's what I say to people. It doesn't matter if you find out in forties you want to be an actor or you want to be a, whatever you want to do. Just do it, you know. Your soul is gonna be appreciate that because sooner or later, that's what you wanna do. It's what you love to do. So that's happened with me. That's fantastic. It's a great story, and you do get sometimes people do get taken. I've got to say for myself, I love acting. That's what I wanted to be as well. And this show that I've done, I, I never dreamed. I did this three years ago, and it wasn't. I wasn't interviewing anybody. I was just doing five minutes, telling people to cheer up. <laughs> that was it. There we go. Here we <laughs> and go. Then, Here we but go. it was then I got because it was about a TV show. Then I got somebody on, and they was like, "You you're quite good at this." And I was, then, but then since then it's built. But I've got into the I was in a film a couple of years ago. Just had a few lines in a in an independent film in the UK, and it's I got the bug back. <laughs> it's like I really know. It's like there is right. a passion. There is a passion I think that people have in acting and in this industry that. This, if you've got it, you've got to, you know, it's, that's why I'm trying to, you know, I'm still trying to push and do things as well. But I always firmly believe that is something you should always follow your dreams like that. And it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter. You know what happened? We don't listen our own heart. We don't listen. We know. But we don't want to listen to you hard. Because we are, we have so much think in your mind like no it's not gonna happen it's too hard of course it's not easy it's not easy show business is not easy <laughs> not easy uh, it's so you know but uh, we don't listen our own heart until one day some people can find out in the 20s 30s 40s maybe never <laughs> so good for you <laughs> that happened <laughs> like me because no, never is late to do anything even in more than in, in acting never is late never I'm telling you, never, never. So it doesn't matter. Exactly. I mean, I think these famous people like I think Morgan Freeman, Jack Nicholson, and Samuel Jackson. I go. think they're, they're in the fifties and sixties, weren't they? When I think there some of them had started. That, that's great example of, of what we're talking about right now. Yeah. Exactly. Cool. I mean, your, your, one of your first big breaks. I say one of the first because it wasn't the first um, thing you're in. Was obviously Bad Boys Two. Yeah. <laughs> What was that like? I mean, Will Smith, he's, he's just, he's a character. I'm not sure. How was that film? You, you, you want to hear it? It's a little long story, but yeah, yeah. Let's, let's be very specific. Yeah, that was my big break because 
yeah, I can tell that. I'm still the movie is running and TV. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just I just went to the audition when I was because I lived first in Miami and then I moved to LA, Los yeah. Angeles. So it was a few months, almost one year before I moved to LA. I was saving mm -hmm. money when I booked that part. And by the way, at the same time when I booked the part, I almost got the part in Fast and the Furious too. Oh, okay. I was very, I was very close. Uh, a friend of mine, he he got the part. Yeah. Uh, Robert Roberto Sanchez is my friend. So okay, so uh, yeah, I went to the audition and and uh, I booked the part and I didn't even have a lines at all. I don't. Mm -hmm. So I, I was like almost extra <laughs> yeah. background actor, but. In one moment, Michael Bay look at me and look at him, and so he asked me to and ask him if I can say some words in Spanish and English. He say, "Yeah, why not?" <laughs> so that happened. That was the happen. It was an amazing experience. But the most I, even amazing experience were when when I met with Will Smith. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you right now, is the most humble person and I've ever seen, I've ever met in my life. That guy is amazing. That guy is mm -hmm. unbelievable, humble. So it was a great, great experience for me. After that, you know, I, I like, oh wow, you know, after work with Will Smith and Michael Bay, and I'll be in the real Hollywood movie, and you see the level of professionalism of that people. Mm -hmm. That's what I say. This is what I want to do all my life. <laughs> this is exactly what what I was thinking. You know, the, yeah. the level of everything is the top. So. After that, I moved to LA. So, yeah, that was gonna be my give me a lot of motivation to keep my goal, you know, to keep my dreams, keep going, keep going. That was the big moment when I moved to LA. After that, the part in that movie. Okay, that's great. Sorry, I think I've got a kitten, a three-month-old kitten. It's just attacked my leg. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, so I mean that's a great that is a great story. I mean the fact that you obviously even met Will Smith as well. Um, because I know sometimes these big movies you might not even get to see the, the principles, but to actually meet him and and have him be such a humble person, um, you probably you know, you see him on screen, he's obviously got this big personality and everything like that, and then just to hear what he's like off screen is fantastic. Uh, there's a story I had one uh, actress who came on and she'd done a film with Samuel Jackson and she she just ad libbed, and this is obviously talking about the professionalism you have of, of when you're on set with people. She ad libbed that her brother had died, and she was just going to turn around and go back to see her dead brother one last time. And it wasn't in the script, but as she turned to do it, Samuel Jackson put his arm straight out, held her back, wow. and goes, "Remember him as he was. You don't want to see." And it was just like that's in the moment. Yeah. You know, it's just amazing. And it's that synergy, I think, when you get films like that and right. you get, you can work with people like that who can nurture you right. as well. As, and you learn, because every day you're learning, you know, uh, no right. matter what you do. So I think it's right. just amazing to hear. And, and the people who, like Will Smith who, who can, you know, who uh, help and um, sort of nurture, pass their skills on, pass their experience on as well that you can, you can feed from is fantastic. That's correct, man. Yeah, when you work with that kind of level of people, they are there because they are good. They they one of the best in the business. Uh, you learn a lot. So that was amazing experience for me. Yeah, and, uh, fun. Yeah. and I was lucky. My my part wasn't cut. <laughs> <Also>. <laughs> that's another that's another sub part of this business. You can be in a movie and then you go in the movie theater and say, Oh my god, I'm not here. I'm not there. No. So I was lucky. Yeah, my part was there. I still was there. And still. <laughs> see my job after so many years <laughs> yeah there's one i did have a guest on who was in who, i was interviewing him for a certain film an independent film and when we were chatting i hadn't seen the film yet and when we did chat he just did exactly the same thing he goes well we can talk about that film but my scene was cut from it <laughs> so i was like oh <laughs> yeah because people don't understand it it's not personal you know it's everything is about oh, the no. story and the exactly. movie and, yeah, when they editing, maybe the, the U.S. scene doesn't move the story. It had to be out, you know. The time is money, so it's part of the business. So when it, when you go in a movie, you, you know what I say? So new actors, oh my god, I'm going to be in a movie. Say I'm I'm just 
telling you something. It's better wait until the movie's out. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. You're not there. What? <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be a spoil. I don't want to be a, you know, disappoint you. But it happens. It happens even with big movie stars. Exactly. They cut exactly. it up. They cut it up them. Because it's yeah. not. It is, the editing is uh, is, is, uh, is very cruel <laughs> for, for, the, for the movie. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you do. Yeah. Exactly. At least, so, you, at least you're a lead. <laughs> you, you're the lead. You almost sure it's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> very yeah, true. After, after, after that, everything is possible. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Sorry, this is the cat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, cat. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, trying to attack me as I'm trying to <laughs> trying to talk. <laughs> that, that's great, uh, and it is you're right. I mean, it also, also how the film flows. So you know, it's it's a very cutthroat world in the in the film industry. I mean, but you've, that was one of your first. You've had over 40, 42 credits that I've seen uh, <laughs> within you Thank know. You. With no, that's it is phenomenal. It's you know old TV Thank series. You. They've obviously I, I can't say I've seen them. Uh, they're, they're Lost Miserables, Lost Miserables, I'm sure I've heard about, um, where you played Juan. Uh, but these, oh, are, but <laughs> these are major, these are, these are major shows. You know, these, you know, so yep. it's not, you've really worked hard. You've got, you've, you've got yourself um, these recurring and lead roles in all these, in the major shows. Is it, Mexi are they Mexican and some US shows as well? So it's, yeah, most of them is from Mexico. I moved to Mexico eight, it's going to be eight almost eight years ago mm -hmm. to, to, you know, I, I was in LA a little stuck. There's nothing happening. So I went there to, let's try it for a few months. And I think was the best move I did for my career. And it started working a lot. Uh, until today, um, right now I'm waiting for the premiere of uh, Sirius TV and Univision is, it is the biggest network in the United States in Spanish. So I'm, I'm like the, one of the bad guys, but all my, is, I'm like a, the the right hand for the lead. The name is El Dragon. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's I've been in a, a bunch of great shows uh, in Mexico since I moved. So I he, I'm I'm keep working, you know. I'm still waiting for very soon be the lead of one <laughs> of the shows. It's just a matter of time. I know. Definitely, definitely. I'll say from from the, the the small. I've only seen you in the one film for so now, but I say you've definitely got that that power and that screen presence to do that. So Thank it, you. It will happen. I was just looking Thank at the Lord. So no, you're welcome. I was just looking at the Lord of the Skies as well, which is about the drug trafficker. Uh, oh yeah. Armando Carrillo as well, where he played a general. So that was. <laughs> so there's some fantastic yeah. shows. And how was what was that like? Because obviously that's a real real life story as well. That, that that is one of the phenomenon shows in Spanish for Spanish speakers in the United States and all South America. I think in Europe also. Mm -hmm. It's based it's based on a true. It's based. Well, I don't know a hundred percent, but Moss is a, a drug dealer on the from the eighties. So yeah, I I went to the season two and three and I played uh, a Venezuelan military guy. So yeah, it's, it's, I'm very lucky and being. You know, very great shows. So yeah, it's, 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 it's great. It's great. You know, being like you said, I've been in, in, in a lot of credits for very good roles, mm -hmm. important roles. Maybe I'm not in all show, but my characters, I try to choose them in that way. It doesn't yeah. matter. It's not a small actors. It's not a small role. It's a small actor. I don't know who say that, but it's very real. So it doesn't matter when, when my manager or my agent sent to me my script or, or whatever going on audition. I see the character and say, you know what? It's perfect. It's only two episodes, but this guy is amazing. I don't care. So that's what I try to do and little by little to build my career. That's fantastic. It's great to hear that as well because some people think entertainment is all about being the show business and being the star but i find that the more interesting obviously it is because that's what you want <laughs> you know you do want that's what you know, the main, you know i can't you won't deny that um but i do find it much more interesting when there's actors like yourselves go for a role because the character it doesn't matter like you said if it's two episodes out of the series but it's right. you've, you've taken it because that character has taken an interest and you think you know you could make it a very memorable character so i mean i know quite a few characters in shows where they've only been in two episodes but i still remember them 15 20 years on 
because they made the actor who played them made them such a memorable role. I think one for X Files I can remember about the guy who played Tombs in the X Files, and, and that's taking me back maybe 25, 20, 25 years. But I can always remember right. it because it was it was a, it was a one episode, two episodes, but such memorable, such so memorably done, and because there was a passion behind the actor who wanted to play that role. That's what I do. I'm like, okay, I'm going to have one episode, and I will try to people remember me. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy. I'm going to to take the opportunity the most I can. So sometimes it's easier, sometimes not. Sometimes if the director likes you to propose, propose. But uh, that's what I, I do. Uh, uh, you know what? It doesn't matter if I have one scene. I want to try people remember me. <laughs> so that's what I try to do my best, my best to try that. So uh, obviously everyone want to be a lead. Everyone want to be in our movie. But you know what? Sometimes it's not like that. Sometimes it's, it's, it's to do you good, do the job and be the best you can. Mm-hmm. And you'll see results sooner or later it's, it's a matter of time exactly exactly it's hard work isn't it so you go out there you you you, you hone your what we call hone your craft you perfect yourself it's you, and then you know you, you that's when the, the, the benefits will start the big benefits will start coming in because you you are you're working hard you're, you're producing great product um as you know for your own self as well and and obviously, these they are seeing you because you, you're going into all these shows, and so you want you know you yeah. you you're, you've got yeah you're you're getting the work in because of that of that ethos that you have. Correct. Yeah. Cool. But I mean, you're not just an actor as well. I know you write, and and is it inked? Your job, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're good. You're good. Yeah. Man. You're good. Ink, inked was shortlisted. There's about thirty finalists in the 2012 Sundance Writers Lab. From over four thousand, you got down to thirty. That's impressive, considering they're worldwide. Good. That's pretty decent. Good job, Chris. Good job, man. <laughs> Thank you for us. Thank you for asking me that because right now I'm in like I don't know what is more my passion to be an actor or to be a writer. So I, I discovered that when I moved to LA. So yeah, Inked. I'm still trying to produce my mm-hmm. movie. It's not easy. <laughs> it's, it's not easy. But yeah, exactly. And in 2012, I sent my script to uh, Sundance Rice Lab. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't even know. You know what I did? Because one of my friends read my script. I said, dude, your script is amazing. You need to try it. And I was very, I I wasn't sure, you know what I mean? I say, dude, Sundance? No way. It's too many people. There's too many connections. I don't have... But in the end, I so, said, you know, where can I lose? Where can I lose? Just send, I sent my script and uh, boom. And well, and the first time, uh, they don't ask you for your script, completely your script. They mm-hmm. only ask you for the first five pages, where I like it. They're looking where is the, in the five pages, my, the turning point in my script happened in, the, in the page 12, like a 11. So I rewrote it. And I sent it, and yeah. uh, after the five pages, they asked me to the complete script to read it. So, so they ask you, okay, now we want to read your script. I said, oh my God, that's good. <laughs> so I sent to I sent to them my script. And one month, I think, month and a half, they I received the email say, congratulations, you and the semifinal after four thousand scripts, only mm-hmm. thirty is going to be in the semifinal. You know what? For me, was the best thing happened in my writing career. Even I haven't done anything. Just a small movie where I wrote it. Yeah. But I'm still working. <laughs> it was the best award for me because obviously I didn't won, but it was good. It was good. And by the way, right now I'm trying to produce my. Besides Inked, I have another. It's a horror movie. The name is Katrina. Mm-hmm. So with my producers here, I want to be the, the director. What is hard when you haven't directed anything? Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna hard. But we working on that, looking for investors. It's a it's a horror movies. It's a horror movie. It's happen. It start and finish in Mexico, but everything happened in, in LA. So it's, I have around twelve scripts already mm-hmm. done, finished, 
So yeah, that's one of my passions right now. Um, and it simply happened because uh, when I heard the story about Int, I was so frustrated. Uh, I was in LA and talking with directors, friends of mine, mm-hmm. and writers, and anyone, they, they don't care. So one of my friends who is a writer say, you know what? You have so much passion for that story. Yeah. Why you know? Why you know? Write about it. I say I don't know about write two scripts. So he told me. So my books. I started going to workshop. That's mm-hmm. what I did. That's what I did. And I never thought I could be a good writer. You know, I, I, I'm very very easy with the structure. Where is the hardest part to mm-hmm. write a script? It's, it's too easy for me. I have the rhythm on the structure in my mind. Yeah. So here we go. Here we go. So I've been. Almost ten years since I wrote the first draft of Int. Tell, let me tell you, Int is about a mother who her son is killed by drive-by shooting. Okay. And I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, um, he, uh, so her son is killed by drive-by shooting, and she devastated. Is her only son. She's a Latina, single mother. So she went to the police department, police office, every month for one year asking who killed my son. And they say, we don't know. We investigated. She got tired to wait and mm-hmm. she infiltrated. She infiltrated in the, in the, in, in the gang wow. as a, one of them, as a boy, to find okay. uh, her son uh, killer. It's about that. So, yeah, oh. it's, been, it's been an amazing story. But still, we see it someday. I can, I can make it. You know, it's not easy. <laughs> Everything in this business is not easy. <laughs> here we go. Yeah. Well, thank that's... you for asking me that. Thank, thank you for asking me that. Yeah, it's one of my passions. No, 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 no you're welcome. That's <laughs> great, excellent. It that's sounds. Good. Yeah, I hope it does make the light of day because it sounds a great, um, great story. And you know, it's, um, I'm sure it will. Like, it's, like you say, it's a. Uh, it's just waiting that one person to say the fact that like you said you even though you said you were disappointed you didn't win in the Sundance to to get down to the last thirty out of over four thousand, that's one achievement which thousands of others yeah, haven't had. <laughs> I know. Excellent. I mean, I know a lot of film writers who'd love to have that as well. <laughs> so that is brilliant. Okay. <laughs> it's fantastic. So obviously, I mean, thank you, thank you. you know, you know, you're welcome. So I'll, I'll, before I draw this to a close, where the Whistler. Now you're going on. It's going on a premiere tour in the US. Is that right? At the right. Moment? We're going to be. Yeah, we're going to have a premiere. It's coming Friday, September six. Uh, like I said before, I think earlier in different cities in the United States: LA, mm-hmm. Los Angeles, uh, Dallas, Austin, uh, New York, Miami, uh, Ohio, Seattle, and. We see, you know, you know how the show business works. If, if people go to see the movie, we maybe start at more cities. Yeah. And we can stay more in in the movie theaters. So please, if you listen to this and you're in the United States, please go this coming Friday in any of those cities, just to go online looking for the Whistler and you see where, what time, what theater you can you can see the movie. Fantastic. I'll uh, I've got friends in most of those cities, so I'll, I'll, do, I'll send I'll send links and tell them to go and spread the word out there as well. Not that it might do much because I'm not exactly um, <laughs> anyone, but yeah, I'll, I'll get my friends to come and support that as well. That'd be fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank no, you so welcome. much. Appreciate it. Man. No worries. Before I stop recording, Fernando, is there anything you'd like to say before to the people who are watching or listening? Just that, man. It's, uh, thank you so much for the for having me in this interview. It was an amazing interview. Thank you. Very great, great questions. And just that, uh, even I know you're in, in, in UK, but for sure everyone can see you around the world. Please, if you're in the United States, this coming Friday, go to the movie theaters. If you go online, just go write the name of the movie, The Whistler. And, and in LA, is uh, uh, independent, uh, independent theater. The name is Lamely. And it's like, I don't know how many in the city, like a five, ten, five, seven, I don't know. So you can go there, please support our movies. Uh, it's the only way the Latinos movies where this quality can be a little longer in theaters. And obviously after we're going to be in VOD, 
very soon. But mm-hmm. now, you know, this is the most important thing for us. And please, thank you so much. Thank you so much to support um, okay. our that. movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, please. Uh, it's uh, official Fernando Gaviria uh, Instagram. Fernando Gaviria on Facebook and Gaviria Fernd and Twitter. Here we go again. Official Fernando Gaviria Instagram, Fernando Gaviria um, on Facebook, and Gaviria Fernd on Twitter. Please follow me there. Uh, every day I'm posting information about the Whistler, where you can see, how you can see the trailer, everything about my movie. Excellent. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. This has been Hellblazer Biz. Hope you've all enjoyed listening or watching. Please remember to subscribe if you were in the UK. Subscribe on Amazon Prime UK, YouTube, Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify. And if you're worldwide, you can also use Hulu and Vimeo as well. I know there to search me out. Please rate me. Please review me and share and share alike. Thank you very much for tuning in. Chris Gordon on Hellblazer Biz.